Hello everyone and uh, welcome to today's webinar on counterfeiting and brand protection during COVID-19 in Myanmar. Um, I am Marta Bettinazzi and I am representing the Southeast Asia IPR SME Help Desk and I will be today moderator. Before we start, I would like to make sure that everyone has a good understanding of how this platform works. You will find on the on your right side of the screen uh, the control panel. Uh, it's especially important that you understand where the questions and the chat box are, because this way you will be able to communicate with us. Um, by writing a question or chatting with uh, the, um, the staff. Also, please will be aware that during the webinar we will have a pool for you. Just uh, you just have to click on your screen to answer. We are looking forward to receiving your questions. Also, we would like to inform you that the webinar is going to be recorded and the recording will be updated on our website, uh, and will also be recorded uh, and put it on YouTube. So uh, please. Um, be aware that you are going to be recorded, uh, but usually you are not going to talk as the attendees. So without any further ado, uh, let me introduce the two speakers. Uh, we have Laurent, who is the Head of Communication and Marketing at, Europe, at the European Chamber of Commerce in Myanmar, and Yuadi, which, which is our external expert for the project uh, in, uh, in Myanmar, and will be the main speaker for today. So um, shortly, this is the, um, the agenda, and um, there will be first my introduction, then uh, the introduction about uh, Eurocham, and then uh, uh, the, the introduction of our services and the main, uh, and the main uh, uh, in speak, speaker. Please, uh, again, there is there, we give you 10 minutes for the Q&A section, so feel free to ask all the questions you want. So now, without any further ado, I will leave the floor to Laurent for the introduction of, of the Eurocham Myanmar. Thank you very much, uh, Marta, and uh, good morning or afternoon to, uh, to the audience. Uh, my name is Lauren Sauté. I'm the Head of Communication and Marketing at Eurocham Myanmar. And I'm very pleased to see that we have uh, almost uh, 40 registrants for today's webinar. So that means that that testify that the brain um, protection is of high interest and concern in, uh, in Myanmar. So just a, a very brief recap. Uh, last year, the intellectual property has uh, considerably uh, moved forward as the industrial design law and trademark law have been enacted in January 2019. And the patent law has been enacted in March 2019 and the copyright law um, has been enacted in May 2019. But all of those four have not entered into force yet. Uh, the rules, the regulation and guidance are still needed to be passed. And the Ministry of Commerce would be the focal ministry to implement the, those IP laws. A more uh, recent progress is a creation of the National Committee for Inter Intellectual Property in March 2020. Um, so things are moving forward, uh, and we are therefore very glad to host this, uh, this webinar with IPR CEA uh, help desk today to clarify the current status for brand protection in the country and answer your, your questions. So IPRCA is a long-term partner of uh, Eurocham Myanmar. Um, we, our two organizations have been cooperating since the inception of the chamber, deliver regular updates on IPR uh, in, uh, in Myanmar. As such, we have on our website uh, a tab dedicated to uh, this organization where you can find uh, all the uh, updates and documentation. So don't hesitate to check it out on, on the Eurocham website. Um, and for those who are not familiar with Eurocham Myanmar, so the chamber, a brief recap. The chamber's mandate is to support European businesses in the, in the country. Its main mission is to advocate for its member interests with organizations in Myanmar, the ASEAN region, and the EU. So the chamber is, uh, is dedicated to initiate positive and lasting change in economic governance in order to contribute to a sustainable way uh, of development in, uh, in Myanmar. So by working closely with both European and Myanmar stakeholders, Eurocham Myanmar seeks to create a mutually beneficial relationship and trusting environment for both parties and to position itself as a significant provider of entry-level information for European business interested in, uh, in, uh, in the country. 
So whether you are considering entering the Myanmar market or you are already established in the country, don't hesitate to engage with us to access our strong network and participate actively in our different activities. We have uh, we organize events, we have many publications, and you can find all those information on our on our website. So um, I will uh, now leave the floor to Martha again for the next part of the webinar. Thank you. Thank you. And um, let's uh, move on. This is the introduction on uh, the service of the IPR help desk. Uh, our project has uh, as main uh, scope though, to help uh, small and medium European enterprises that want to do business in Southeast Asia to protect their intellectual property. This can take the form of the enquiry helpline. So if you have any question for us, regarding uh, your IP protection in the region, you can always email us. We answer in three working days and the service is completely free. Uh, we also have a lot of uh, materials on our website that you can, uh, again, download for, uh, for free. And you can take uh, part in our events like you are doing today, also in, uh, in person when uh, the circumstances will go back to normal again. But for the moment, all our activities are online, so don't hesitate to visit our website to be updated on the lat latest news regarding the IP protection in Southeast Asia and also for uh, our activities and because maybe there is something else you will be appreciate to attend. So um, uh, as for uh, that I, I finished my part I would like to spend uh, some uh, minutes introducing you with today's speaker. Uh, our expert uh, uh, Miss Yubadi is, is she's the director of Tickle and Gibson office in Myanmar and uh, she has been a lawyer for more than uh, 10 years in Bangkok before this. And um, she is rec recognized as a leading lawyer in Myanmar. And um, she even made to the top uh, 40 under 40 list last year. Uh, she's specialized in trademark, uh, but also uh, patent and copyright. And um, she is um, she advocates in behalf of over uh, over uh, clients, and uh, she is also very good in drafting uh, strategies on intellectual pro property protection in Myanmar, which is not the easiest thing to do, as we also uh, Laura from the chamber has has remembered to all of us. So, without any further ado, I will uh, give the floor to our expert, and uh, um, I will take the lead again for for the question and answer please 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 use the box to communicate with us if you need anything thank you Hello everyone, good afternoon. I think it's, uh, I hope everyone is, um, have a, okay, let me show my face. Hello everyone, good afternoon everyone. I hope everyone in Myanmar have stayed safe and also uh, to be healthy during this, the periods of time. And as you know, the Myanmar situation is quite good. And we hope that uh, everything will come back and resume at a normal very soon. Uh, I will start my presentation about uh, counterfeit brand protection during COVID-19. This is a uh, really uh, suitable time for uh, us or uh, for uh, for me to have the presentation today with you. This is because it is quite surprised that we have the case during the COVID situation in Myanmar, but we need to handle for the rate actions. This is a good time that I can share my experience during this period, what happened and what we plan to do and what's, uh, uh, what we should plan and think how to prepare before we taking action under the current situation, because this is not easy. As you may know that uh, many area in Myanmar is locked down and all the shops are closed, even the restaurant, supermarket, and everything. And how 
we can take the legal actions as the step by step. Okay, I will show my presentations now. Okay. Today, our agenda will be the first one, the right of the trademark and brand owners in Myanmar under the current practice and law. As you mean, it's a, uh, as uh, Lawrence already mentions about um, the implementation or announcement of the new IP law in Myanmar and including about the trademark law as well. Uh, we can learn that uh, because that our law is not implement yet that's why and how we can uh, make the legal action or take action under the current practice this is quite interesting another one is the possibilities of the taking legal action against counterfeit product in myanmar during the covid 19 crisis as we already i mean in the same topics and also the last one will be the case study uh in the case study because i just input and insert our recent case at the rate actions. And this case also on the proceed with the police uh, for uh, preparation of the case. That's why uh, in the part of the case study, uh, maybe it's, it's a confidential. That's why we we uh, apologize that we not like court for that matters. Okay, before we start my presentation, I would like to join me to, to prepare the polls about yes. uh, my question is, okay. We are, we are going, to, we are launching the poll now. And uh, so the people will have one minute uh, circa to vote. And uh, it's, um, it's, um, it's, a, it's a poll to understand the the people that are in uh, listening to us today it's not uh, uh as we say a personal question uh, yeah, it's yeah, more yeah. to understand the, the level so we yeah. leave you another 30 seconds to take your uh, position and then uh, we will comment briefly and and leave and go back uh, um to the presentation yes So I think we have uh, given you enough time to make up your mind and uh, we are going to show the results now. We have uh, a good majority of 58% who had actually registered the trademark in Myanmar and another 42% that has not. So I give you the floor back to our speaker to comment these results and move on with the presentation. This is a very good, I mean, uh, resource because I can see that who are already registered and protect the, your trademark in Myanmar and also the person who not register. But I'm quite surprised that nobody's used, I mean, not register and but only use this one is okay. This mean, I mean, I think the person who already registered in, in Myanmar mostly is already, already have the one company operate or expansion in Myanmar and also have the product sales or distribute in Myanmar already. For the person who say no, maybe it is on the considerations whether they would like to register under the current practice or would like to register under the new law or uh, would like to know about the foreigner can register the trademark in Myanmar under the current practice is this possible to do that or not? 
I, because uh, I also already read about the question about the person who already make a question when you apply the registration as well. Okay. After this, to mention to prepare the result of 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 your poll, we can start my presentations. And the person who say yes may be looking for how to protect the brands and how how to uh uh I mean commercialize or how to continue for the futures on the new trademark in Myanmar. For the person who say no, we can learn together today. What is your right or what is the right of the trademark owner in Myanmar? That and then you can consider that you want to protect or register the trademark under the current practice or waiting for the new law. Okay, the first. As we already mentioned that. Currently, the new IP law is not implemented yet because uh, they need to wait for about the rule regulation internal before uh, starting for the new practice in Myanmar. However, the person who not only Myanmar citizen, but also the foreign citizen or foreign company or non-foreign company in Myanmar can apply and register under uh, register their trademark under the registration act by filing the declaration of the trademark and also declare about what the list of goods or service that you want to protect under the current practice and also need to provide the detail of your um, entity and detail of your name some kind like that however um you need, if you want to appoint the local representative, for example, law firm or the local citizen or local representative of your company, you need to prepare an appointment letter or a power of attorneys for them to submit on behalf of yours. And many people said that uh, how the practice of the registration under the current practice you may know that under the current practice, it's just we call right recordations because there are no examination process about to review about this mark is distinctive or this mark or similar to others that don't have any about uh, practice on that matters. However, if your trademark is uh, related to about the moral or about something like her to religion sentiments or some kind like similar to Myanmar frack, that one is can rejectable or cannot be registered based on the opinion of the officer. The current practice you need to register with the uh, office of these of registrations who handling for the trademark recordation under the current practice. However, as Lauren mentions, then under the new law, Ministry of Commerce by the Intellectual Property Department will handling for the IP registration in the future. This is the current practice. Uh, some people, uh, when you want to register in other country, you want to check it first that do this trademark already register in in that country or not, you can do the trademark search. However, in in Myanmar, there is no official trademark search facility for the database. That's why some of the law firm or some of the local company will collect all the trademark that published in the local newspaper to handling and check for the trademark search. However, that one is cannot currently by 100% because some of trademark that already record or already register with the office of the of registration that did not uh, announce or publish in the local newspaper because it's not mandatory. About uh, the interesting one that I already mentioned is about trademark publication. After you finish or complete the registration, you can 
public cautionary notice we call like this in the local newspaper to warnings or uh, make the knowledge to the public that you are the owner of the trademarks and don't allow for any people to use or, or infringe your trademark. This is we don't publish in the gossip, gossip but now we use in the local newspaper. That's sometimes when you read the, for example, Myanmar time, you may see some trademark cautions. That means this is the trademark publication under the Korean practice. Okay, we know about the rights of the base of the right of the uh, under the old system. That's why how we can make the rights for the current system. Many people say that as the Myanmar don't have the IP law to implement it yet, but how? they can make an enforcement based on the right of your register or another one that important in Myanmar because they comply with uh, the common law is the use. If you already use in Myanmar and you can prove when you use in Myanmar, that one is very important. You can, you can use that priority right to reserve the better right under the current law or current practice to the police or to the court or to another person. Some people can use that right based on use to find a cancellation to the court for cancel the trademark that already registered later as well. Uh, I, already, I, I already list the law that include about penal codes and some section of the civil uh, matter for your um, reference about and also we use that this law for our current practice to take the legal action against for the infringer under the current practice. The, the first one is Myanmar Penal Code. This is about the criminal actions. Another one is Myanmar Merchandise Mark X. This also have the cross of the criminal action as well. The trademark registration, I already mentioned about recordation of the declaration. Specifically, Lip X, this is one for you to request the injunctions, the, uh, uh, the permanent injunction that you can request based on this law. And another one is the C and Custom Act. This one to claim about your right based on the product that brought into Myanmar by land or, or waters or sea, something like that. This is we can use for that matters. And another one, the Myanmar investment law is not direct, but in Myanmar investment law is already mentioned that uh, international property right of the investor, including about trademark, copyright, patent in, in an industrial design. That's why this is the one that if you are the invest, investor, that copy uh, that IP right is already mentioned that in that law as well. Um, I will not touch much about the overview and current situation of the the IP law or the new IP law because uh, Roland already mentioned about this. Okay, I just prepared a brief of the rights of the trademark on the owners under the new trademark law, if it's come to be enforced and implemented in Myanmar in the future. The person who have the register, the trademark under the new trademark law is already mentioned, it's very clear under the ch chapter 12. It said that a trademark owner shall have an exclusive right to prevent any person does not have permission, the mark owner from partaking in trading acts use an identical or similar mark for identical similar or for identical or similar with good and so with if it's merely to public some kind of 
uh, some people use the counterfeit or imitating with your register mark. That's why they cannot. About can prevent other people to for uh, the use on uh, trading X for the well-known mark. You may know that in the in the futures under the trademark law is allowed for the register of the well-known mark as well. That's why this is the one that they prevent and protect for the trademark owners who already register under the well-known mark in Myanmar have the right as well. And important is can they can find a criminal action or civil lawsuit under the trademark law as well. And in the important one is when you have right, you can make it transfer or license to make the IP commercialized for the trademark that you register in Myanmar as well. Okay, we will go through about the practice. Under the current practice, what is the, the law can be applied? When we say about the, what is the IP enforcement, we need to think about how you create that trademark, how you get that trademark to be your own. When you get the trademark to be your own, you need to do some kind like IP creation that we call. When you have IP creation to get mark, you can use that mark to be a register that we call IP prosecution. When you register, you also want to make the money or make the profit on that matters or that mark, for example, the Licky marks or the, uh, the uh, phone mark or something like that, you can use as an IP commercialized by licensing of franchise, something like, like uh, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, or some kind like if you want to give someone to use your brand, for example, uh, teddy bear or Hello Kitty, some kind like that, that used for many kind of things in, 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 for example, notebook or in the pen, some kind like that. That's when you get the license for them to produce the product or something like others. When you have the right and you make the profit, it may risk for other people can see the opportunity, op opportunities to use your trademark. That's why they have the IP enforcement for the both civil enforcement and criminal or administrative enforcement for you to protect your trademark in Myanmar or other country. This one is overview is maybe the same. Okay, when we said about um, civil enforcement, we may consider about the uh, section 54 of the Specific Relief Act. For uh, the person who used the counterfeit trademark, you can request for the permanent injunctions and also uh, use for the Temporary injunction also under the order 39 of the civil procedure code for request to the court to ask the person who infringe or selling or disputing your product to stop to use that product in the market before disputing or now they already dispute, you can request to the court. But you need to prove it that you are the owner and you have the right and you already use some kind like that. That's one is is we need to prepare the document for court to be to be uh, with and take the action. And the court will request some guarantee because this one is we need to stop their business. It means this is a very concern for the court that if they already have like that's why we need to 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 prove the right of your own to when you want to use this section. And also you can use the common law on thoughts of the passing off as well. If some people is use uh, uh, the trademark without your permission or authorizations, you can request the compensation. That means the based on the damage that you receive. 
criminal actions, this one we can do for based on the rape action that I already mentioned. Under the penal code, we have we normally use four sections in the penal code about section 4A2 about false mark or false property is cognizable, often compoundables. Up, this is I uh, have the imprisonment and fine or both based on the court considerations. Section 40, section 4A3 is mentioned about who or the person who counterfeit the marks. In section 4A5 is about mention who are die place and instrument for the purpose of the counterfeit product. Some kind like make something change or create something to be the counterfeit product. This one also consider under the penal code. And, then, and the last one that we use, we normally use this section is section 486 for the person who sell export or proceed for the sale or trade counterfeit trademark or property marks. This one we normally use about this. And another one that I mentioned in the early slide about the Merchandise Act is also mentioned about penal course that prescript in the penalty applied for the false trademark on the trade descriptions. This is the one that, that we use for, for, for the criminal actions. If we see for the administrative enforcement, we mostly working with the Myanmar custom department that uh, to uh, protect the infringement good or the illegal product that not uh, that meets list orders into and brought into by land or by sea. That's one we can uh, apply the application to the Myanmar custom with by attaching the declaration of ownership, the agreement of the the appointment of the local distributors and prepare for them consideration. When the custom accept your request, they will dispute that your request to all custom area in the country for their consideration if they consider some product brought into Myanmar that's similar with your trademark. And also, okay, after we take action under the penal course or the merchandise mark X, the penalty will be imprisonment and fine or fine. And before the imprisonment and fine, we need to consider that uh, to do for the investigation for the police to see the infringement of the good to be the evidence to present to the court. Uh, to make it clear what I say about the uh, criminal procedures under the current practice that we practice about the investigations. Uh, we normally, under the current practice, because we need to deal with the agency and also the law officers, the main key is we need to consider that how we consider the product that infringe. We need to know that where they sell or what is the kind of the product because we found that some of the product come come into Myanmar by the uh, parallel import it's not have the infringe it is original product but original in product but that's but this is not not sell by the local uh, distributor or legally or local distributor, that's one is another, another matter not, not similar with the infringement. For the infringement, we used to handle about the product that very similar or identical. And also they have something changed. For example, the packet change color. That's why the first one we need to check first, that product is this uh, or genuine or by parallel import or 
the fake product or where they sell? What, what is the, this is in the big market or just only one shop? That's one we need to, to, to find the target after we have the, the, the information. And then we need to prepare for the um, first information report or we call FIR to the police to inform the police that we found some uh, suspect product that we uh, believe that that are the counterfeit product and then submit to the police for their review. And then police will be review and this cut with the law officer to get the authorized and sections and discuss with the head officer for their further process, internal process to get approval for the police investigation. Because police investigation is mandatory under the current case as a criminal procedures. After police investigate and found that uh, the infringement product, they can uh, prepare the case and collecting and uh, investigating and testimony or the relevant person or the person who are in the shop and then submit the case to the law officers. Law, of, law officer in Myanmar is some kind of public prosecutors and then public prosecutor will submit the case to the court and then the court will consider based on the section that I mentioned and then have the judgment that will be imprisonment or fine or both is depend on the court. Okay. Okay. I finished my presentations. Thank um, you. Yep. It was uh, very, very interesting. And uh, just one note for our uh, uh, attendees, uh, the last slides yes. were confidential, so they will be taken out of the recording. Uh, because of confidentiality, of course. Yes. And uh, now I will share my screen and uh, we will start asking uh, some of the questions because there, there were quite a few. Um, first of all, uh, um, the first question is, actually the first two are about parallel import uh, and uh, uh, the, both the attendees would like to know like how they can use uh, and if they can use uh, official trademark uh, license to to protect the the, the their own brand from um, from parallel import. Um, initially, parallel imports in Myanmar is not easy because because it's is uh, is uh, we face this problem as well because the product and trademark itself is not infringed, but just the illegal import. Because uh, under the current practice, they don't have the law, they like law about this to take the legal actions. That's why we try to investigate to the client that's where is the source of the product import from. Because, and then ask the trademark owners to be discussed and negotiate with the original country that uh, about the uh, we have some uh, uh, the parallel import happen how we can control and how we can discuss but sometimes uh, the person who are uh, sell the product in the original country or import uh, import country they didn't know that that person will come and sell into Myanmar. That's why this is the one that the both side, I mean, the, the third, the three party, the trademark owner, local distributor in both country need to be uh, discussed together and try to avoid about the, any issues on this matter as well. And as you may know about on the 1st of July, the law, the new law issue on about the law protection of the import volume into Myanmar. That law is mentioned about uh, if same products uh, have the volume over in the market, the ministry can consider to, to stop or not allow for that type of the same product with the manufacturing that already manufactures in Myanmar. 
import that type, the same product into the country. This one may be health, another issue for the person or the trademark owners in the futures or the person who have already extradited the company in Myanmar to avoid about any volume of import product with the same methods or the same product in the futures. Okay, uh, thank you for the very um, detailed response. Uh, there is another question that it was also about uh, the same, I think the same slide about the procedure, the criminal procedure, uh, because he was asking how long the process take uh, from initial investigation until judgment, of course, like uh, an estimation, how, how long it could take? It actually it will depend on the the what should I say the police officers and also the cooperation with uh, with law officer because sometimes if the the law the we found some active police officer that we lucky that we mostly face with the active police officers they will try to cooperate and from I think we starting in May. For example, I compare with the current system, current action. Uh, we start to discuss with them in May, and now we can start for the red action in the beginning of June. And now the police prepare the case for the uh, law officer to be reviewed, something like that. This one is about two months, but normally in the purest case, we also have uh, about one year is at least until wow. the court has adjustment yes okay that's uh, that's very interesting and i think put us in the in the right uh frame so to say uh there is another question that says uh, um what is the current practice on trademark protection in myanmar first to use or first to file i think that maybe there is still a little bit of confusion on this could you please um uh, i'll pass <laughs> Yes, at this one, this one is very interesting, and I want to clarify for this issue many times because because the current system and the new law is this different system. That's why the first one, when you want to consider the right under the common law and under the current practice, the first to use is consider as the priority right. But under the new trademark law mentioned about, the person who file the first to file or prior to file have the right or better right than the person who file later is mean first to file system. That's why you may, but how the IP office will be considered on this matter because the new system and the old system is quite different. The IP office said like this, they plan to implement the short period, for example, six, six months, they call the soft opening period. That soft okay. opening period allow for the person who already register the caution, uh, register the declarations in Myanmar or use or use the trademark in Myanmar. That's why I have the question in number three to prove okay. their right yeah to prove their right that they already have right they already have used they already registered before and then they will consider based on the under the the new trademark law that comply and 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 what should i say and consider to make the decision before the uh, announced in the gasset for allowing other person to do the opposition because the new system will be opposition. In this six month period, you can sub, you, if you submit, you can feel free to submit any first priority of use together with the declaration or other cautionary notice whatever you can use and prove that but after six months that we call the soft opening period the system will be considered the first to five 
Okay, so be prepared. Yeah, is, uh, we have mm. another question in parallel in port, which apparently it's a huge topic. Um, so this person is asking, um, isn't the key to forbidding the import that they should not have a valid FDA license? Is the FDA license not an indirect prote protection for make parallel import illegal? So basically yes. saying that if yeah not using the trademark but using this other uh, like the, the license to sell yeah. if, you if, can stop it. yeah if that product if that product is uh, food medicine medical absolutely that's one you need to register FDA if the person who not register FDA they cannot sell that product in Myanmar and not allow to sell that product in Myanmar as you may see in the last of two, one or two years, the FDA go to an all market to investigate for this type of matters. That's when you can see that, okay, uh, this is another option. But for the other product, for example, clothes or some product that not require FDA, you need to consider for other methods. Yes. Uh is asking if uh, the same person is uh, would like to know if they can register for the FDA despite not having a trademark. So can I sell something in, in Myanmar even if I'm not the owner of the trademark? This is the question. Um, and actually, when you apply the FDA, then it, you need to mention the name of the product, right? When you need mm. to mention the name, that you need to make sure that when you register, you already get an authorized for using that trade name or trademark in your product. Because, because I, I understand that mostly uh, when you register FDA, it doesn't mean you will be the trademark owner. That's why to avoid any complicated thing, you need to discuss with the trademark owners or the manufacturer who produced that product, that to make it clear in the beginning before you disputing sell that product. But mostly, you may when you apply for the FDA, you may get the document to prove that that uh, product is already applied in other country, or you have the menu manufacturer support documents. That's why you need to consider. But your own. If you want to register that trademark, I think it's maybe rigged for you to, to have any issue from the trademark owners, accepting you get the trademark license. Okay, so basically the yes. idea is that they are not the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. And then there is another question, sorry, uh, this is the last one we take because otherwise we stay here the entire evening, which is nice, but maybe we all have other things to do. Uh, for parallel import, can we utilize the competition law on the basis that the unofficial importer seller have committed unfair trade practice? What about Myanmar consumer protection labeling requirement? Any suggestions? So I think the idea is that like is the consumer protection or the competition law playing any role in this mechanism regarding the parallel importation? Or in general, the trademark protection. <laughs> yeah. I think it's is it can can you can consider for the both competition law, but you need to for the competition law you need to to consider what what should I say what is the action that they made to you that for example they sell that product volume until you cannot compete into the market or not. And in the consumer protection itself, it's already clear for the consumer. For example, if they are, I, I already mentioned, if you are food or others, is the, it's you need to consume it. You need to pass the FDA registrations. That FDA registration also have the mandatory for the label. And also for consumer protection also need to have category, for example, uh, about the direction to use, and about the um, the guideline or about any allergy or caution, you need to be mentioned and translate into Myanmar. This one is about consumer product. If that product 
when you consume and get any, I mean, wrong, healthy or get allergic or, or some people make or some people or the whole uh, community is have, have any issue, you need to claim from the person who manufactures or the person who sell that product or the person who import that product because there have many type of the person that we can take action for that matters. It mean that we need to take action to the person who import that product. But you need to know first that who are that person. Uh, okay. This oh, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's yeah. my idea, yes. Thank you, thank you again for, uh, for the very interesting presentation and for uh, uh, helping us with uh, this uh, so many, so many questions. Uh, I, I want to tell to all the attendees that if you have uh, any more questions, you can always email us um, to to have an answer. And uh, let me, um, before we say goodbye, uh, let me present to you the our uh, last uh, uh, last sorry um, infographic, which is about Myanmar and has been developed uh, with the help of our expert. And uh, you can find it all on our website and uh, uh, also in, on Eurocham uh, Myanmar uh, um, uh, website at the moment. And uh, if you're interested in uh, trademarks, uh, why not to come also to our webinar about the Madrid system, uh, which is going to cover uh, um, the entire world basically because it will it will take the Madrid system uh, in uh, Southeast Asia, China, and Latin America. Of course, Myanmar is still not part of the Madrid system for uh, reasons that now should be obvious to everyone. And uh, for uh, the um, 23 of July, we are going to have another uh, webinar on fit and tech trends in Southeast Asia with our uh, experts from Singapore, but uh, the webinar will be uh, about the entire region. Uh, and with this, I leave you with uh, all the, um, our context, and I would like to thank again our speakers today and uh, the Eurocham Myanmar for participating and co-organizing this event with us, and uh, our experts for, for um, um, presenting for us. Thanks again. It was very, very interesting, uh, and I wish you uh, all of you a pleasant afternoon. Bye bye. Bye bye.